day 14 of the European getaway. We don't really have much planned today. A little vacation from our vacation. We're just going to relax and maybe I'll give you some behind the scenes at my first two weeks of being a travel vlogger. So for example, every time you walk into a restaurant, you think to yourself, oh, I need to get an establishing shot. I need to get a picture of the sign. I need something to remind me of where I was. And then you have to film some food, and then you have to film yourself eating some food, and then you maybe film someone else ordering. Oh, and when you walk out, I try to always kind of reset everything so that the white balance is normal, or you'll get a shot like this where you're completely blue, and you're, you always want to be ready to shoot, but set to video mode. Sometimes you forget and you record an entire dinner in slow motion, but that can work. And sometimes eating like a local doesn't mean their local food, but go to the, where they actually go. That Thai food beats every Thai I've ever had in Dallas, and it was at a counter kind of fast food chain almost. this would be a good time to take a step back and reflect on what we've seen so far and really what it's like to be a first-time travel vlogger traveling around carrying equipment and trying to put out daily content I don't know am I a travel vlogger or am I just a vlogger who's traveling I don't know I'm new to this as far as gear I pretty much have been carrying around the camera lens tripod and microphone kind of all built together I've been carrying it around everywhere. It's a little awkward, a little heavy, more than I'm used to. Uh, I used to just take iPhone photos and videos, but I think the quality here, I think it's worth it. I hope I'm not disturbing those ladies too much. But still enough to turn heads as you talk to yourself in public. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. But now, two weeks in, I feel like I'm more used to it. Every night I have kind of a routine. I dump the clips from the current day onto the laptop and then back it up to the uh, external drive. And then I have been editing off of the laptop's hard drive, but I'm gonna start editing off of the external drive just because I've completely filled up my laptop. If I were going to add something to my equipment mix, I think it would be a drone. So far, there's there's times that I would have loved to have one. There, there are shots that I thought would be amazing, but I don't have one and it's fine. And it's something else to carry around, something else to remember. I also do have a uh, little Rilo cam. Haven't really used it that much. Used it for the staircase uh, at Notre Dame. I actually attached it using a suction cup to the balcony in Pamplona uh, and it fell overboard, surprisingly undamaged. And the people at the bottom saved it for me. Gave me time to go down, retrieve it, come back up and suction it on a more stable surface, which gave us this shot. When you're doing this, when you're travel vlogging, you're you're really always thinking. So it's like you wake up in the morning and you're thinking about the story, what what is what is going to unfold today. You're you're trying to capture every moment. You're kind of always shooting. Um, you know, for me, I enjoy it. This is what I like to do. It's it's like a hobby. And as I go around and see new things, finding a new angle, finding something to take a picture of, that, that's what I would do anyway. Uh, instead of my iPhone, I'm now carrying this big rig. Are you doing a behind the scenes video? Yes, of little Davy <laughs> in the passenger seat. But as you're traveling around, you're kind of always thinking. You're thinking, what story is going to unfold today? What, what am I going to do that's going to be interesting? And how can I package that together and turn it into an episode? And that's really my goal here is it's, it's an experiment. I'm seeing what happens if I shoot something every day and create new content. The biggest pointer I'd say is Remember to have fun. You're on vacation. Experience it. Enjoy it. Hopefully it comes across that I'm having a good time. This isn't a real job. This is a hobby and if you're not having fun, it's not worth it. It's the people you meet that make this interesting. There was a uh, waiter at one of the restaurants we went to. He saw my camera. Uh, he came up to me and told me how he was a photographer and uh, we actually exchanged information. Pro tip, get some business cards, hand them out to the people you meet. You'll get new followers on YouTube, and um, I tried to do that, I ordered some, they didn't make it in time, but I've been exchanging uh, information with people, the, the waiter that we met in Paris, we exchange information, we're friends on Facebook, he's now a subscriber on YouTube. Business cards would have made that way easier. Another helpful tip is slow down. 
uh, we went to Paris and we didn't set out to see everything. We picked a few of the highlights, but there's a lot to see and do that we decided not to do so that we could have more time just hanging out on a patio or sleeping in. Don't be the typical American who tries to go to Paris for three days and see it all. Go and experience a little and come back. It's great. We're checking out of the hotel here at Finca de los Erendinos. Before coming here, I knew how to say una mas cerveza, por favor. And that's about it. And I'm not much better now, but I at least feel like I can can somewhat communicate, can get my point across. My best ordering experience so far was not actually using Spanish, but was looking at Google Maps and the restaurant review and the photos attached to it and pointing at this is what I want and this is what I want. When there's absolutely no English on their side and very little Spanish on my side, sometimes pointing goes a long way. Megan translated the menu and ordered what she wanted. I looked at Google Photos and pointed. I really knew very little about Basque culture, Basque food. Uh, I'd say try new foods, try new things, and you'll really enjoy it. You can, you can actually go on vacation and not spend all the money in the world. You can skip the Michelin star restaurants and have just as interesting, maybe better dining experiences. Just going into a random place ordering some pinchos. Pincho Turo de España. Not that kind of pincho, no. So as far as being a first time vlogger, this is really the first two weeks that I've been carrying around extra equipment. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little behind the scenes of what it takes to be a travel vlogger. I've got two, four, I have four more weeks of this and hopefully my videos get better. I'm behind in editing, hopefully I can catch up. I'm trying to put out new content every single day here on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching. Seeing the new subscriber count is great. It's not why I do it, but it is really cool to see that people are actually watching and engaging with these videos. So thanks so much for watching. I'm Dave Hansen. Until tomorrow, if I can get more content out, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.